As the skills and abilities of the tactical civilian continue to progress, one of the big topics of discussion continues to be communications and whether you're a part of a preparedness group, a community aid and response group, or anything else in that regard, communications makes everything go a whole lot smoother and more efficiently. So today we're going to talk about three ways that you can progress your comms capabilities. As always, social media continues to shape and change what is popular amongst the community. And as 2023 continues to go on, it seems like it's the year of capabilities for the civilian. And one of those big things this year that a lot of people have been talking about, which is for good reason, is communications. And that is what we're going to dive into today. But first, guys, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Head over to our website. Check out our store. We don't have our fall class dates posted yet as of the time of this video being posted, but that will be coming soon as all of that is in the works. We had a great session of spring classes and we look very forward to bringing more classes in the future and bringing in more people from the outside to hopefully continue to progress the education and exposure that we're able to provide to everybody else. And as a disclaimer for this video, uh, everything that we talk about here today is all in theory per se. We're going to assume that all of our listeners you know, abide to the uh, rules and regulations of the FCC. We're not responsible for anything you uh, do which is wrong or misuse equipment, so on and so forth. This is purely educational content. So one of the very first things you can do, whether you're a very small group or a larger organization, is improve your handheld radio capabilities. And for a lot of people, something like this Baofeng is the standard for a lot of people. It's analog, it's unencrypted, and it does not perform the best, although it does have its place and purpose in this giant comms discussion. However, we can improve from this. A lot of people have switched over to something like this, the Motorola XTS 5000 which is a digital radio operating off of P25. There are other options amongst P25 as well as DMR options that are all have, uh, have their place uh, in, in the comms discussion. However, something like this, a digital radio, also has the ability to become encrypted. For example, most XTS 5000s, so long as they have a UCM in them, are capable of AES-256 encryption. Encrypting your radios, besides just changing over from analog to digital, is an absolute game changer to anyone as comms security is of the utmost importance. You're already gaining a level of security going from analog to digital, but now we're taking that a step further with our own encryption. And a lot of these radios are capable of various forms of encryption. We just push AES-256, that is, it is a good gold standard across the board for a lot of people. Now, we sell these on our website now. We sell the VHF and the UHF-1 and UHF-2 versions. So if you're interested in progressing to a radio like this, please check out our store, send us a message. We are able to answer any questions that you may have, or we will find out the answer for you. With this kind of stuff, buying in bulk is always better, and we provide custom encryption to group orders, so on and so forth. However, moving over to a radio like this is an extremely easy first step in progressing your comms plan and comms capabilities. There are tons of people, both on Instagram and YouTube, that push a ton of really good content on how you can be self-sufficient in programming and tinkering on your own radios. And that is the goal for you know all of this that we talk about here on this channel. Uh, whether it's comms, whether it's logistics, whether it's your weapons, whatever it might be, is that you become as self-sufficient as possible. You're able to fix things in-house or you look outwards to gain the knowledge to do so. So head over to our website, check out the different digital radio options that we have on there. In the future, we hope to have more and more options as we continue to grow the store. Next up on our list is the SDR, Software Defined Radio. It is a very small USB device that's capable of quite a lot. And I, at this point, am still not even uh, super knowledgeable on all of the capabilities of the SDR. 
as there are multiple versions of the SDR. Essentially, the SDR is capable of receiving and transmitting different frequencies. But what I like most about the SDR is that it does not require a radio and it really progresses the signal intelligence capabilities of a, a group or network of people. You can utilize a lot of different uh, scanner software and applications that help you really process what is coming in more than focusing on what is going out. So the SDR is definitely something you should look into. All it requires is the SDR itself, some sort of laptop or tough book, something like that, and then an antenna to make all of this work. Super great capability. There's a ton of information online. Uh, they can be a little bit tricky. This is getting outside the wheelhouse of what I would consider basic knowledge. It is going to require a little bit of effort. However, it has a ton of benefits, and they really are not that expensive. There, are, Like I said, there are many versions of the SDR, so you'll have to head over to somewhere even just like Amazon, and you can find all of the different versions of the SDRs. Do your research, uh, research, research before you purchase an SDR and try to figure out what are you truly trying to accomplish with your SDR because different SDRs can do different things and you want to know what kind of software you're going to be using and so on and so forth. So do your research on what all of the SDRs do and their capabilities, so on and so forth before you buy it. However, the SDRs, a great way to boost your signal intelligence capabilities you know, for the smaller group, which is of course extremely important. The third and final way that you can improve your communications abilities, which is something I also myself am getting more into now, is HF communications. What I have in front of me is the Zygu G90. It is a very small HF radio. I would say it's uh, probably the size of like a lunchbox, a little thinner, uh, obviously. However, HF radio is a whole different beast. There is a lot of science and understanding that goes behind HF radio, and all of it changes based on the time of day, the solar cycle, the weather, uh, whether you're using voice, whether you're using data, whatever that might be. However, HF gives you the ability to really push the distance that you can cover with your communications. With VHF and UHF portable radios, you know, you're limited to line of sight as it is, and though you can extend that through various methods, terrain becomes an even bigger obstacle to the ability to reach out with your portable radios. However, with this, with an HF base station, whether it's in a man pack or it's stationary, it's mobile in a vehicle, whatever it might be, you can really push your capabilities. As well as on the data side, you can send messages over uh, various chat softwares. You can send files in some types of software. The HF provides a whole different field of possible capabilities for the civilian group. And it is definitely something you should look into. Now, I will preface it with there are few to limited ways that you can encrypt uh, different uh, uses of the HF radio. And a lot of it is not going to be legal. So keep that kind of stuff in mind when you're doing this. Again, we are not responsible for any wrongdoings that you hooligans conduct. However, if we're talking about pushing the distance of our communications, being able to send files, anything like that, HF is going to be a great wheelhouse to go into, but it requires some time and it requires some studying. Uh, you know, I've been studying this on and off for months now, and even so, I, I don't fully uh, understand all of this quite yet. We're still in the application phase of getting the general know-how. However, definitely something you should look into. Again, social media has a ton of of people and resources that talk about what you can do with the HF radios and how to get that stuff rolling, guys, send them a message. Everybody thinks that a lot of people in the communications community, gatekeeps and whatnot, send them a message. They, a lot of those guys that post content in relations to communications is willing to help you out, talk to you, and a lot of them produce content. So go check a ton of those guys out. If you're interested in the pages that I'm talking about, Head over to my personal Instagram, Jeremy, at Everyday Since Tactical uh, underscore Instagram, or head over to the ECT Instagram page. I'm constantly sharing pages and giving shout outs and whatnot to different comps pages. So you can look at that kind of stuff. Outside of the three pieces of equipment we talked about, guys, the know how and the implementation of comms is extremely important. 
And a lot of people are going to be in that VHF, UHF range. Not everyone's going to be able to jump right into SDRs or HF or other things like that. So you have to figure out how can I make this work in my wheelhouse? We as civilians are operating on limited infrastructure and even more limited funds. So you have to figure out how can I build upon this? Specifically for something like our portables, how far can I get this radio to stretch? Am I going to use a local repeater network? Am I going to invest into the capability of having my own repeater network? Am I going to build out man packs to match this exact radio with encryption capabilities, such as the XTL 5000, which is something we're working on here in house right now, is creating a VHF digitally encrypted man pack. Uh, but then you also have retrans sites, and it goes on and on. And while everybody can't know everything, if you are a civilian group and you're a member of you know whatever community group it might be watching this, it is good to dedicate a comms guy and just have them go wild in on the knowledge. Even for a preparedness network, as emergencies and disaster strike, communications is everything and passing information is even more so important. Not everything is about shooting tactical cool guy stuff, guys. Just your basic preparedness for different uh, fallouts and disasters and storms, all this kind of stuff is really important. And communications helps everything go a whole lot smoother because if you know, you know. That's all I've got, guys. Until next time, train hard, train often.